So what's the name? What was the name of your team? Unruly. Okay, Unruly. And so how well did you do today? We did not play, but it was good. All uh, right, down there with us. Excellent. Yep, yep, we don't yep. feel alone anymore. Exactly. Okay. So what's, what else goes into your gumbo? Tell me about the process. We did you start and how does uh, it go? smoked turkey, uh, actually Greenberg hickory smoked turkey, and then we pecan smoked duck and a hen. And then you use several different sausages that we pecan smoked. Uh, two or three different kinds of venison sausage, an andouille sausage, a pork and alligator, and then tossa. So what are the advantages of using multiple types of sausage in a gumbo? Is it just multiple experiences and something? What's... It, it's, it, it's kind of good but kind of bad. It, it's, it's not consistent because every different one you get could be different right but that could be that could be a good thing you know um some of ours were a little spicier than the other ones have a little bit texture a little bit different flavor so just add some variety to it texture flavor so every bite you get something like new. you can't yeah yeah it can, it can just give it so a little bit different flavor. and how, how long you been cooking gumbo oh i don't know so she's at ESA. Uh, I'm wearing Forever. Church, forever. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is it an old family recipe or is it just something you kind of jazz out, play jazz with? Or? Uh, right leaving, you just basic regional kind of I, I like process, you know, you make a roux and, and smoke some meat and like mix all the stuff in, in, cook it together. She, and, probably, she probably said something. So I don't know if there's any, no, no, no secret family recipe or anything like that. <laughs> you do something to do, like uh, doing the yard work or something, but different. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you know, just have, or when you're out in the woods camping or fishing hey, or Sophia. whatever, you know, you can have hey, can a pot going. Uh, so how how much how long did it take you from having the products all together to finishing it and having it ready to go? Well, okay, so this one was pretty quick. Um, because we did all of this within an afternoon and an evening. Well, cooked it, whereas usually it'll take like two or three days because because we'll smoke birds, you know, and you, you pull those apart. Then you might smoke the the sausages by themselves, you know, and then cook down a, a, a stock broth, you know, um, which you have to wait for the birds to get done for that, you know. So it can it can take a few days of prep time and lead up just to preparing all the parts, you know, if you make everything, you know, by scratch. And doing it in that style, yeah. Which you know, but I mean, family recipe. I've also been known to go to the grocery, buy rotisserie chicken, slice up some sausage, brown it, throw it in with a jar of roux. You're done in an hour, right? Time to eat. So those can be just as good. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. I never thought about that. Well, I mean, rotisserie chicken, you pay, what, six bucks for those? You buy a raw bird for six bucks, so you get it cooked and ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's about the same price as a, as a raw one, too, yeah. isn't it? The rotisserie yeah, one? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they rotisserie it much better than I could bake it in my oven at home. Yeah. I'd burn some part of it and the other part would be cold. Do you mind if I go get a couple of shots of it? No, no, no go ahead. Yeah, help yourself. Okay. So, uh, pull the lid off there. I think it's still on, so okay. watch out, it's hot. All right, so we've got the option of both brown rice and we got the option of white rice. Let's see what else we got going on here. This was the one, like mine, that did not place. And uh, I'm just gonna lift this lid. We're gonna take a look at it. And that is a really cool lid lifting thing. Oh yes, yes. And that, and this looks a lot like our gumbo, but it's much more sophisticated. Let's see what rises at the top. The different types of sausage, all kinds of neat stuff. Yeah, look at that. And they got the grease. So I think I got too much grease in my gumbo. So that's a lesson learned for next time. All right, so this is a, a non-placer, but uh, they're really nice folks. All right, so what we got going on here, this is the Madison gumbo. We did not place. Of all the groups, uh, that previous group and our group did not place. They had first, second, and third prizes. But uh, this has been a very educational lesson for all of us. I've learned about the process of competitive cooking, and uh, I've got a lot more to learn. I know that. A lot more to learn. But it's been fun. We had a great time. We made some really great gumbo, too. So let me tell you about my gumbo. 
All right, so here's my gumbo. I did some kind of things that I didn't see done around here. Like I used the chicken skins. What I did was I fried those chicken skins in the grease that uh, that I uh, got from uh, browning the andouille. So what do we got in here? We've got smoked turkey necks. We've got andouille. That's andouille right there. I got that from Best Stop. And uh, we got regular old you know chicken. I think there's about I don't know, eight leg quarters in there. And then a couple of half chickens. Or split chickens. We got turkey necks. Smoked turkey necks. And of course we got the trinity in there. We got the roux. We got all kinds of great stuff in there. But I think uh, mine has chicken skins. And so mine's a little bit more greasy than these other uh, gumbos out there. So I think what I need to do is follow the advice somebody else gave me and skim some of that grease out. Now with chili, I want as much grease as I can. But with gumbo, I think I want a little bit less grease next time. Maybe just half of that, something like that. Let's take a look. Let's see what a spoonful of this leaven looks like. Yeah, oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, that is some good stuff. All right, and that was the Madison Luxury Gumbo. Didn't win, didn't even place, but it was fun. We had a good time doing it. No. Stuffed so sausage, you... that means you've had several different gumbos today. Absolutely, had all five gumbos today. That's a lot of gumbo. <laughs> so, Britt and I grew up uh, in Vermilion Parish, south of Highway 14. So, we know a thing or two about gumbo, right, Britt? Yes. And so, you have to start with the roux, and then... Um, it takes a long time, it's a process. You can't rush it. We started Friday night for Sunday afternoon. Um, Britt, tell them about the smoked turkey necks. What you did with those? Oh, old family. Did you smoke them yourself? No. I'll never tell. Okay. Maybe Earl's did it for me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all it's all about building the flavor from the, from the bottom up. So that's why. Layers. Layers, smoked turkey necks, tasso, and then you just gotta listen and say, is it enough or do I need more? <laughs> what else, Britt? That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> what else do you made wanna know? Made with love. Definitely made with love. And right. it's fun. So you guys have been cooking gumbo a long time. You said grew up of, south of, you're gonna have to tell me what Oh, south is. of Highway 14 in Abbeville. Okay. So when they issue an evacuation order for, for Vermilion Parish, it's either all of Vermilion Parish or south of Highway 14. So okay. we live south of Highway, we grew up south of Highway 14, closer to the Gulf of Mexico than I-10, in the heart of Cajun country. And both of our parents are good cooks. And so I think we learned about cooking gumbo and what a gumbo does. Our grandmother made um, a turkey gumbo the day after Thanksgiving every year. Oh, and that's the so right thing to like, do. Yeah. And, and so turkey's like, terrible after, well, I mean, it's, you can't eat turkey straight for too long. No, and with, the, <laughs> with the gumbo, keeps it moist, but it's also about community and family and people together, and there's nothing like a gumbo for bringing people together. Okay, who all was involved in this particular gumbo? So, me and my sister Britt were, and then my dad said he didn't want any recognition, but he came in and he was at the house while we were making it and helped us and was taste testing and then my sister's kids and her husband helped too. Okay, do you like kind of taste test it each step along the way? Like oh, the roux, yeah. the broth and whatever? You have to taste it all the way through, but you know, we don't always salt it all the way through because if you start salting it Friday night, it's going to be way too salty come Sunday morning. Gotcha, gotcha. And also, gumbo is always better multiple days later. Oh, so it ages well. Yes. It's like Arby's. I don't know about it. I have no idea. <laughs> Arby's, you buy like three to four, five roast beef sandwiches one day, let them sit in the refrigerator for two or three days, and then they're just phenomenal. Okay. I don't I did know not, why. I did it's not know this. probably some terrible <laughs> carcinogenic chemical reaction. I have no idea, but. No, but it's like you, you let it sit, and then if you, you can skim all the, the oil and the grease off as it cooks, and that way right. when you get it, it's not too greasy, it's not too heavy, and. Okay. Yep. So you skim the grease as part yes, of your recipe. Yes, okay. I do. You don't keep that in as like a badge of honor. Not always, no. Okay. That's how I do it with chili. I keep no, it in there. No, she didn't. I keep it in with the gumbo. <laughs> and it is kind of greasy after that. Well, that's just... But I mean, when you grow up doing it, you find tips and tricks that work for you. Right, right. What right. makes it your own. Yeah. Because it's almost like a... 
I don't know what. Everyone is so personal. Whose gumbo did you have in there last? Okay. So what? what's the name of your team? I saw it. And can you spell it, please? <laughs> it's Hallelujah. Like Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yep. H O L L A R O U X Y A. And you guys got to sign up in front of that table. We right do. There. All right. I'm going to practice my lack of single camera production skills and walk around okay. and get a shot of the spelling of it momentarily. Gotcha. All right. Well, I, I look forward to trying your gumbo again. Yes. I'm still like not quite ready to. Uh, too much chaos to like eat right now but okay. i'm gonna come back and get some more if you guys are gonna be out for another 20 minutes or so and you can keep it in the fridge for the week it'll be it'll still be good through the week i mean granted thanksgiving will be on thursday but, well you know. that's what we're doing this year is i said no food bombs and we're grazing okay so I like we've got it. grazing so fodder right here okay or, over there but yeah yeah we are going to graze and we are going to not stress over like one big giant food bomb at 1 p.m. on Thursday no. that we've all got to be coordinated like a bunch of ants in the same place at the same time. It's not worth it. We're going to do bathrobes and wander around the neighborhood in pajamas. So. Yep. Yep. I like it. All right. So now that they're gone, I'm going to go get a shot of that. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good place to go. Oh, here we go. Excellent. Hallelujah. It was that our Rutan clan? Yeah. Tell me which. See what we got. Go for it. Do you want me to stir it too? <gasps> oh, if you'd like to. Oh, look. Oh, yeah, we're running. We have a kind of a combination of a really, really dark roux and a light roux because the dark roux gives you all that flavor and the light roux is what gives it the body and the thickness. The lighter the roux, the thicker it is. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. It looks glorious. How far can I get that GoPro in there? <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. We didn't really either now I think about it. And when they did do it, it, never, it was never kind of eh. Yeah. So you ready to tell me about your gumbo? Yes, sir. Well, I want to hear about come this. Come get these folks in here, too. Okay. Hey, everybody. This well, is this. the chef. And the we chef. are the sous chef. Yes, we are the sous chef. Uh, sous chef. Mm -hmm. And I'm the official observer. The <laughs> observer. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's the heavy lifter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Heavy lifter. Okay. Able enough to win her. Okay. Uh, okay, it's chicken and sausage gumbo. It has six different types of sausage. It had chicken sausage smoked and green. It had deer sausage smoked and green. And then it had andouille. And then it had pure pork sausage. And I think that's about all the sausage kind of that we crazy. had. But anyway, and then there was breast meat and thigh meat, uh, brown, and there it is. Okay. You mind if I get like a shot of it real quick? Let's see what we got going on in there. Oh, it's a lovely color. Oh, yes. Oh, and it's got egg in it, too. Oh, it's got an egg. That's what that's what's floating right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Is it, is it okay if I stir it around a little bit? Go ahead. Kind of see what all's there in the bottom? Here, I'll stir it oh, for okay. you. Oh, here's the camera. Let's see what all comes. Oh, oh, they devoured that. You're down to mostly juice. Yeah. So we got a couple different things in there. Do you make your own sausage or do you? No, I bought it at something? Joey Lanyos. Joey Lanyos? Yep. Is that the one out there passed in back? Red Road. Yep. Okay. It has some of the smoked deer sausage and chicken. That's deer sausage and chicken, okay. Okay. There we go. The egg. Piece of egg. Okay. And I can't, I think all the, the, uh, there's some andouille sausage there. So anyway. Oh, wonderful. Keep the flies out of it. Okay. Let's go see if we want. Yes, okay. Um, I'm going to shut this off. Thanks. All right, we're here with Mr. Earl Leger talking about some seafood gumbo he made for the St. Barnabas Gumbo Cook-Off. What all's going on in that gumbo? I have... Happiness uh, and joy. Thank you. Happiness and joy. <laughs> I have, I have uh, crab, I got shrimp, and I got crawfish in there. And uh, I got the roux, a uh, brown roux, dark roux. And I cooked the roux down for about six hours to make sure you don't have heartburns. 
and then I've cooked everything else. The last thing I put in is all my all my stuff, and I cook it for 30 minutes. So you, so you cook it down for how long to avoid heartburn? Six hours. So it causes heartburn if it's not cooked. If it's not cooked properly. That's a serious commitment. That's yep. like a day-long commitment to yep. making some room. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, if you don't cook it long enough, then you have heartburn. Okay, we're going to end up with heartburn, Mama. <laughs> yeah, I only did it for maybe an hour, 30 to 45 minutes probably. Yeah, sometimes you get heartburn, it all depends, so. Okay. But yeah. All right, so where does your recipe come from? Huh? Where's your recipe come from? Email recipe. No, is it like an really? old family recipe or yeah. something? Yeah, we've been cooking it. Uh, the pot was full, and that's all we got left. Out of the pot, that's it. And that pot was full. Oh, wow. We served over 50 people. 50 people? Yeah. Oh, dang. I think we got like three or four. We got. I got here late with the rice, so yeah, that was my we, bad. We did 15 cups of rice. And that's almost gone. That's all we got left. Oh, wow. So, yeah. yeah, that's about, I've got six cups and I've got about four times that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be eating a lot of gumbo the next week. I, well, we us too. But that's okay. I, mean, I don't mind eating a lot of gumbo. Oh, yeah, me neither. Gumbo's good. Eat five bowls of gumbo for the Lord. Thank you, yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Seafood gumbo. You have to lose it. It doesn't matter. It's it's all right. don't matter. We hate it's to interrupt it. the game. Hey, we hate it's, to we hate to interrupt the game. Please interrupt. But we appreciate everybody coming out, and we appreciate it, it was actually five wonderful gumbos. Thank you all. We from the vestry's perspective, and we really, really appreciate it. Yes, we're glad that everybody's here. I know a lot of people had to leave, but we have some winners to announce. Look at these beautiful spoons. They're actually. They say St. Barnabas. They say St. Barnabas engraved. First place. Second place and third place. They're actually engraved with the St. Barnabas logo. So we're quite happy. Yes. So, but this is third place. So in third place is Hallaroo. Yay! 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 Let Maria take a picture. Y'all are so cute. Yeah, so cute. In second place, I'll throw in my notes. A and K Roadkill. Woo! Thank oh, you. There he is. Thank you. We'll step back behind you. Congratulations. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh. Smile with your spoon. I love this spoon. I love this spoon. a great spoon. And in first place, we have the Legers. Yay! Yay! Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely wonderful. Would you like your tickets? Thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. Take your picture. Email. Thank you, everybody. We had a wonderful day. Thank you all. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it would have been me cooking yeah. if I could have. Since it's his recipe. His recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Thank y'all. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, we got the GoPro over here.